So pickpockets are like a real threat and it's a real thing. Even if you're holding it in your hand, they just come and snatch it right out of your hand. So when you come to Europe, you have to be mindful of this. Um, I thought I would just jump on here and make a quick update video before I just go back into like normal content because um, not everyone may know but on Sunday evening I was mugged my phone was taken from me for the third time since living in London and um, I'm a bit shaken up from it I'm not gonna lie today is Tuesday and yesterday I was really not feeling good about it at all. I just kind of moped around. I couldn't focus on anything. I got like teary a few times and I just thought I would make a quick update video and just talk about living in London because it's, I just want to let people know it's not all fun and games. Obviously any big city you're going to have crime and stuff, but I really think I should let people know if anyone deciding to move here, I should let people know what it's really like. And I can only speak from my personal experience and from what my own personal friends have experienced around me about living in London and how safe it is here. So like I said, on Sunday evening, I, well, my phone was taken from me. And when I said to people, this was my third time, this has happened to me, people were a bit like, how has it happened to you three times? Were you just really like not being careful? Were you like flaunting? Were you... And I also want to go into another rant here. When something happens to you, something like this, people give their unsolicited opinions, almost victim shaming. If you've just been mugged, it is never your fault. It is always the thief's fault. And it's just a lot of things I've been thinking about, a lot of frustrations I've had over the, like since yesterday and Sunday evening. I just want to like get it out in a video. So. So I've been living in London since 2012. So now it's my eighth year. And if I talk about the first time my friend got taken from me, I was sitting in a cafe with two of my friends. We were in South Kensington, which is a very touristy area with lots of museums. We were in a cafe and I had my phone right in front of me on a table. And these two guys just walk into the cafe. They put newspapers or like flyer type things all over our table. They spread it over our whole table. And we thought they were trying to sell us something. So we we're like, oh, no, thank you. We don't want anything. And they're like, okay. And so they take everything with them. And then we carry on chatting. And then two minutes later, I say, guys, where's my phone? And then obviously they had, they did the newspaper thing to distract us. And then while they took it away, they took my phone with it. And then not even a year later, Within the, within the same year, my second phone got stolen. And this time, me and Nasli, she's been in some of my videos, we were on Oxford Street, which is the busiest shopping street in London. And we were about to take the bus home. It was winter, so we were wearing coats and things. And this guy who was kind of hanging around, he suddenly, he like grabs my arm and he's like, oh, can you tell me the directions to blah, blah, blah. and I was just a bit taken aback because I mean he's like touching me. I was like, oh, I was just like, can you like please get off? And I was like, I don't know how you can get there. And so he was make, being like quite like making quite a commotion about it. And then the bus came, and as soon as the bus doors opened, me and my friend we just went in, and then we went upstairs on the double decker bus. But then I realized afterwards why he was making such a fuss because that was a distraction tactic. He was doing that and like grabbing my arm while like I was getting flustered while he was going into my coat pocket and taking my phone out of my coat pocket. So me and my friend, we went upstairs. Yeah, two, three minutes later, I'm like checking myself, where's my phone? And I think I just, I couldn't believe it happened again. So yeah, having things in your pockets is not safe. Coat pockets are vulnerable. Jean pockets, don't put anything in the back pocket, try to put it in the front pocket, but that's still not a guarantee that someone won't take it out of like out of your pocket so I don't know what advice to give because it's not nothing is safe really those two um, muggings I guess happened in within the same year so after the second one I was I became so cynical untrusting of any stranger that came up to me I just assumed everyone was out to get me even if 
a stranger with good intentions came to me to ask for directions, I would just immediately just close off and I would just be like, please ask somebody else. Or I would just like completely just ignore them and walk away. Like I probably seem like so unfriendly and just so like, you know, not a nice person, but it just, London has made me this way. I just don't trust anyone. After the second time my phone got stolen, I was on the bus with my new phone. I was sat on the front seat of the second floor. And then this, he was quite young. I think he was a teenage boy. He taps me on the shoulder. I turn around and then he says to me, he said, I ran out of credit and I really need to send one text message to someone important. Can I please borrow your phone for just this one text? Before this would have happened to me, I would have just given him my phone and been like, yes, you can. But because I'm not naive like that anymore, <laughs> I just looked at him and I just said, I'm really sorry, but my phone's been stolen twice and recently as well. I just don't feel comfortable giving my phone to you. Can you go and please ask somebody else on the bus because there were loads of people. He said, oh, but like, I just need it for one text. It, will, it won't even take like 30 seconds. I was like, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't. And then he was like, okay. And then he didn't go and ask anybody else on the bus. So what does that tell you? He thought I just looked naive enough to like give him my phone. He was going to like dash off with it. But thankfully that time I managed to protect my phone. So that was back in 2014 or something. So it's been six years and without any incidents went past, but I was still very, I've learned my lessons, right? I would tell my friends, you have to be careful with your possessions, your phone, anything. Just, you have to have it on your body at all times. Do not let it out of your sight. A lot of my friends would be like, oh, that's never happened to me. Like I literally put it in my back pocket. It's never happened to me. It does happen, okay? So Camilla, who's been in my videos, she's had her entire MacBook taken from her bag. Uh, she was eating somewhere. She had her backpack with her MacBook inside, underneath her feet. And yeah, it should have been completely on her, like on her body. You, if you're going to do that, you need to have like the strap um, wrapped around your ankle so you can feel it if somebody's trying to take it. But she didn't have, she didn't do that. She just had it underneath her feet where she thought it was going to be fine. And then she said she noticed some guy loitering around in the back, but she didn't like think too much of it. And then she finishes her meal, bends down to grab her bag, notices it's much lighter and her MacBook is gone. And she didn't notice a single thing. He didn't take her entire bag. He only took her MacBook. So this is how skilled they are, these pickpockets. You literally don't notice it as it's happening. And she's learned her lesson after that. My ex-boyfriend. When I told him I've had my phone stolen twice, he was he thought along the same lines of you are probably not being careful. I know how it is in London. That's not going to happen to me. Well, it happened to him. So and it was in broad daylight. It wasn't dark at night either. It was in broad daylight. He had his noise cancelling headphones on, which that puts you at risk because you obviously you can't hear things coming. He had his headphones on. He was walking down the street texting and guys on mopeds comes and snatches it and he drives off. Moped gangs in London are a huge and real threat. They're everywhere. It doesn't matter what area of London, it can be in the, like the worst parts and it can be in like the poshest, most expensive parts of London. They're everywhere. And the police can't do anything because they just drive away so fast. And there's so many of them. I honestly feel like crime in London is just getting a bit out of control. I feel like with, yeah, COVID, I'm, everything has just gotten worse. If I talk about my most recent time, and this was, this has honestly um, shaken me up the most because it was the most blatantly aggressive. Because the first two times they were kind of like sneaky and scammy. And I didn't notice my phone being taken as it was being taken. I already realized afterwards. But this time it was just blatantly aggressive. So on Sunday evening, I was out for dinner with Camilla and another friend of mine called Dorian. We were having dinner in central London. And then I took the bus home. It must have been around 10 p.m. And from the station to my where I live, my flat, it's really not a long walk. Five minute walk maximum. And I've done it so many times in way later times of the night. But I guess this time I was just unlucky. I got off the bus. And I was walking home. I was not texting. Yes, I had my phone in my hand, but I had a pop socket that I always have on the back of my phone. And my fingers were like in a grip around the pop socket and around my phone. So I thought I had a pretty tight grip on it. And 
I was just looking at the road in front of me walking home and literally I had no headphones in, no airpods in. I heard nothing from behind me but I felt like a hand grab onto my hand and it's still all I saw afterwards was just a guy in a blue hoodie jacket. I didn't see his face, anything. I only saw the back of his head. Drive off in a on a bicycle, not even a moped, on a just a normal bicycle. He had my phone in his hand. And for one second I would just like stood there dumbfounded and then I screamed. He's already rode off, you know, onto the roads. So so I went into the nearest like corner shop of license almost in tears and I asked the guy behind the shop like behind the counter can I please borrow your phone my phone's just been taken can I call the police from your phone he was like oh yeah that happens quite a lot in this area and so he lent me his phone I called the police uh, the guy on the phone asking me questions like did you see his face what race was he do you know where he was going like how am I supposed to know where he was going and then I just asked him, like, there's nothing you can do, right? Like, I'm not getting that phone back. He was like, yeah, just, he was, he just said, it's just be grateful that it wasn't your life. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the guy on the phone sent two police officers who were nearby in the area in a car to like talk to me. And then they came and he said, okay, you're not harmed, right? In all honesty, they were not nice. Uh, they were really dismissive and really, condescending because I had told the guy on the phone that this is my third time this is happening to me they were saying oh if you if you had already had this happen to you twice you should have known better like were you texting couldn't you have waited like to go home to like send that text or call I was like I wasn't texting yeah it was in my hand but it makes no logic whether it, they were like you should have had it in your bag but he could have just as easily taken my bag and rode off with that I felt even more upset after they were telling me these things Pickpockets in London just get away with it because the police just literally can't find them all. There's no way to track them. To be honest, like, yeah, yesterday and today, well, since Sunday evening, my anxiety has been, like, through the roof. I have heart palpitations. I can't sleep. And I just get into these, like, negative thoughts. And I know it's, like, irrational. And I know it's just, like, my fear. But it's, like, I feel like I don't, I just don't even want to go outside. The thought of, like, stepping outside the front door with my bag and my violin like I just imagine like someone like lunging at me or like trying to take something from me again or like yeah even worse like acid in my face or knife things like this yeah I need to uh obviously not have these thoughts or like just get over them but really I really in my personal experience in my personal opinion London is not safe you can take all the precautions you can but if they've got their sights on you they will take it from you, you know? So I am grateful that nothing worse happened, but it has really just shaken me mentally. And I just almost feel like I want to like move away, whether like from this area or for London in general, like I've just been having many thoughts. I have some like ideas. If they ever come into fruition, then obviously I will let you guys know. But for the time being, they're just ideas. Thank you for anyone that like wrote me like left me a message like i really appreciate like everyone doing that i'm not gonna lie i still feel like a bit um like anxious about just like going outside and and everything but i just hope it will get better in the next few days i'm going to be even more hyper aware hyper careful when i'm out and about with my possessions I hope those guys that steal and mug people, you will get your bad karma. You will get what's coming for you, okay? <sighs> like literally, I just feel like something's like sitting on my chest the whole, like for, since like the last two days. So anyway, I'm gonna try and be productive again. Like um, I'm filming this on my new phone. Also, this is another thing that annoyed me. The iPhone 12 is about to come out. And once the 12 comes out, then all the previous models, like the 11, they drop in price, they decrease. But I had to pay for this new 11 in full price. Thank you to the guy that took my less than one year old phone. Oh, and I had also filmed vlog footage of my dinner with my friends that night. And I got loads of like video and photos. All of that's gone because my backup was only from like Sunday morning, not evening. So I can't do that. But luckily everything else, it was in my iCloud, so. For that, at least I'm thankful. 
I will go back to posting like just normal happy things and everyone please stay safe whether it's from corona or from criminals please stay safe stay vigilant thank you for listening to me talk and rant uh, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one